तेदमे ज्ञानलिंगेशय धीमे तो गुरु प्रचोदया ओं ओं योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरी गुरु महाराज की जय स्वागत वनक नमस्कार and uh, really special to have all of you with me today today marks the 75th day of these online morning sessions during covid-19 lockdown and something that started on march 29th just as i thought okay maybe in the morning i can share a few minutes of practices and concepts with my beloved yoga family worldwide has uh, metamorphed into this uh, experience of 75 days of non stop sadhana together and we'll keep it going as long as it goes no no goals being set when i started it there was no idea of 50 or 75 or 100 or 1000 or anything so even now i'm not going to keep any number in mind as we complete it we are happy that we have come that far and the goal is infinity because growth is infinite the only other thing that is infinite is human stupidity hmm? <laughs> the only as i <laughs> i think it is einstein or at least most of these quotes are attributed to him and einstein is said to have said something like there are only two things that are infinite in this universe one is the universe and one is human stupidity and he said i'm not too sure of the universe huh? so this is just where we are hmm? anyway 75 days of exploring various concepts and practices of the gita ananda yoga tradition the gita ananda yoga tradition which is uh, a tradition of rishi culture ashtanga yoga that is passed down from the guru to the guru swami ji swami gita ananda giri receiving his teachings from yoga maharshi swami kanakananda bhrigu who was the codifier of the system as we understand it and swami ji reframed it in modern medical scientific terms the actual codifier i would say is swami kanakananda bhrigu who was a professor at bhu ram gopal mujumdar mentioned in autobiography of a yogi as the sleepless saint kanoya and ram gopal mujumdar who was known as swami kanakananda bhrigu with his modern education and perspective and understanding of the modern human being codified or recodified the system that then swami gitananda giri with his medical knowledge and again added life experiences and connection to something infinite brought into the structure that we have and amma ji meenakshi devi bhavanani she then has taken it forward systematizing it because swami ji and i can understand him as a three we just come up here and we say what do we teach today and it comes and amma ji said well things have to be in a structure and she gave a beautiful structure to the teachings which have helped us all to understand the teachings in a further manner swami kanakananda got his teachings from swami vividishananda bhrigu who received them from swami purnananda bhrigu and the lineage is said to have gone all the way back to the great saptarishi the great maharishi bhrigu himself and this is why the atharva veda which is associated with rishi bhrigu and the teachings of tantra the teachings of energy especially have been part and parcel of the gita ananda tradition where every practice we do is based on energy it is not done just for the physical benefit or for the physiological benefit or for the psychological 
but every practice is approached as an opportunity for us to understand energy, the energy that is in us and energy that is in the universe. We have been exploring the concept of the Bindu and the Bindu is this dot. So people say, oh, it is just a dot put on a face to make you look better or something. What this dot does, what the Bindu does is that it reminds us of the need to focus our mind if the energy is to come alive. The connection between the Manas and the connection between the Prana. Yato Mana Tata Prana. So important. Yato Mana, where the mind goes, Tata Prana, the energy flows. And this is why in yoga, the proper focusing of the mind has taken great importance. Yogena Chittasya, as it is said. Yoga for the mind, to purify the mind. For that, one has to focus. One's mind has to move from the Sarvartha, which is all scattered, to Yeka Gratayo, which is that one-pointedness, which is where the light that is everywhere becomes the laser beam. And the mind, just as that laser beam has immense potential use, the mind starts to become useful in that one-pointed focus. That one-pointed focus of the mind, the dharana, enabling the dhyana and the samadhi to occur in the process of samyama. Samyama is the process where the dharana has to become, dhyana has to become samadhi. For that, the mind has to focus and for that pranayama enables us to become fit. Dharana sucha yogyata manasaha. The manas has to attain yogyata, fitness. And that is what Pranayama gives us. When we are talking of the Bindu, we are talking of a focal point of consciousness, a point of consciousness that is an aperture, that is an opening between the unmanifest and the manifest. You could say it is lying between Purusha and Prakriti in another way. Purusha is the unmanifest consciousness and Prakriti as the manifest universe. Hence the Bindu lies, Nada, Bindu, Kala. Between Nada and Kala lies the Bindu. It is the aperture, it is the point. And as we said yesterday, it lies at the junction or the conjunction of the Vijnana Maya Kosha and the Mano Maya Kosha. Because to focus you need to have the power of the Buddhi. Without buddhi, they cannot be focused. Manas cannot focus on its own. The buddhi is higher than manas and the buddhi has to enable the manas to focus. That is why it is at the junction of the Vijnana Maya into the Mano Maya. The Bindu cannot just be in the Mano Maya because it requires choice. Mano Maya doesn't have choice. Vijnana Maya has choice. And this is why when we choose to focus, we can focus on external the Bahya Bindus or the internal Antara Bindu. So what are these external focal points? One is the focal point at the base. It is called the Mula Bindu. Mula meaning the root, as in Mula Adhara. That center that is the root support center. Adhara means a support. Mula Adhara, Mula Adhara. That Mula which is at the root. This is a contemplative point which is called the Mula Bindu. It is an externalized Mula Bindu. You then have another externalized Bindu which is at the navel. It is called the Nabi Bindu, the navel focal point. So you have at the base, then at the navel. You then have one at the throat, Kanta Bindu. So you have Mula Bindu at the base of the spine. You have the Nabi Bindu at the navel. The Kanta Bindu. These are three. And these very much correlate with the practice that we are doing when we do the Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha, 
and chalanda bandha so the bandha becomes a vehicle another tool to work with this at another level so one is you focus your mind if you want to focus your mind what do you do you do the mola bandha automatically your mind is focused there so with the mola bandha currently the mind is focused at the mola immediately the mola bandha can be visualized the mola bindu can be visualized and the mind can focus on this point the moment the mind starts to focus on that point the energy flows into that point and the mola all the correlations of the mola which include the gross level of existence all of them will come alive in our consciousness the mola bindu and the mola bandha enabling that to happen udhyana bandha when you breathe out and now your mind is focused on the nabi bindu through the udhyana bandha one is focusing on the nabi bindu and then jalanda bandha and at that point one can focus on the kanta bindu these three are said to be the location also of three safety valves because the universe says what if people are not ready for this experience and so it has put safety valves along this energy pathway just as in your homes earlier we used to have the fuses that would burn out and nowadays we have the breaker switches when something goes wrong that trip of the electrical circuit the breaker trips these are the psychic breakers and they are called brahma granti 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 means a knot it is the breaker for the energy in case somebody is not ready it prevents them from harming themselves by having the energy move before they are ready now bypass this and that's why you have people who go mad with these type of practices where they are not ready for the practice and they have they they can harm themselves i remember a person who met me when i was working in the orville health center and a western gentleman who had decided to practice advanced pranayama from a book kitab guru hmm? book guru hmm? this is one one reason why we are always very skeptical of putting these teachings in books or in the internet even some of our senior teachers have written to me that whether i should be doing what i am doing i accept the point of view because i know they are expressing it from love and not from jealousy and because it's coming from love i'm also considering their point of view and of what i share in you know certain mediums this man came to me in the hospital at the health center and he said my head is on fire internally my head is on fire what can i do he was looking for a medical answer for something that was non medical some people like to call these kundalini problems and one of my father's old students and senior teachers of the parampara ravi daikma who was in boulder colorado used to deal with this kundalini problems and whenever there was anybody in india who had a problem he would redirect them to me and this man he said my head is on fire and so then i said what did you do he said well i bought this book and i thought i'll start doing it i said what did you start doing he said well i went straight to the pranayama section he bypassed the first 
four five chapters went straight to pranayama session what did you do well it said the best pranayama is where you breathe in for 16 counts hold for 64 and breathe out for 32 so for the last 10 days i have been trying to do that i imagine someone who has never done yoga who has never prepared himself without guidance and just from a book trying to straight away do 16 counts in 64 held in and 32 out because the book says this is the peak of pranayama and so he wants to directly go to the peak hmm? what a what a lovely lovely as someone said ignorance is bliss hmm? ignorance is bliss ignorance is astonishing hmm? well had to give him some simple sukha pranayama six in six out and said do this for a few weeks and you know you have to rebalance your system yeah? you have to rebalance your system because you have just pushed your system which was not ready for it it's like a thin wire having a high voltage electricity you just burned the system that is why you have to go back this is the importance of the guru and yes apu today is guru var thursday hmm? om guru bhyo namaha very true the guru is very important because the guru enables the shishya the student to be guided in a safe manner especially when it comes to these practices people people can people can you know learn to you know twist a bit and turn a bit and touch the toes that can be done but the more internal practices one has to be careful so you have at the base the mola bindu nabi bindu and the kanta bindu and these are also correlated to the bandhas as i said mula bandha udyana bandha and chalanda bandha that also enable the opening of the three blocks brahma granthi vishnu granthi and mahadeva granthi these are opened up again by these practices we then also have another focal point of consciousness nasagra bindu this nasagra bindu is where you have the focal point on the tip of the nose this is a very important point of focus and is also mentioned in the bhagavad gita where the mention of lord krishna saying how you should sit erect and how you should focus either on the tip of the nose or the bhu madhya these are the very uh, clear instructions given in the bhagavad gita for contemplation so this is often you know gazing at the tip of the nose is actually a very important part of this practice and that is where you use the nasagra bindu and then we have the bindu between the two eyebrows bhu madhya so when we are talking of the externalized bindus usually the mula bindu the nabi bindu kanta bindu and nasagra bindu are externalized the bhu madhya is externalized but is also part of the internal bindus and then the top of the head where we have what is called trikuti bindu is actually again an internalized bindu but is also part of the external system so the moment you come up into the head region the cranial region the two bindus that we are talking about especially these to the bhu madhya and the trikuti they are more an internalized antara bindu but can also be used as an external focus so the mula bindu nabi bindu kanta bindu nasagra bindu uh, bhu madhya bindu and trikuti bindu becoming the external focal points and different asanas different practices enable the focus on this to happen sometimes that is also called a drishti so mula drishti nabi drishti kanta drishti nasaga drishti bhumadhya drishti trikuti drishti drishti means you are fo- you are you are sending your pers- uh, perceptive apparatus that is basically 
drishti means the eye but it means all the processes of perception perceptive apparatus i got it right now you are sending your mind there that is where you are focusing on it now when we come on to the internal bindus we are talking about the base bindu being here which is bhu madhya and each of these i'll try to explore a few more days on this the bhu madhya is between the two eyebrows and from the bhu madhya if one were to go in a couple of inches one comes to a point which is the agnya bindu now the agnya bindu is one of the few bindus that is actually in a chakra so there is a agnya chakra energy and within the agnya chakra energy you have the agnya bindu so there is unique energy thing so you have the chakric energy which is primarily anandamaya kosha and you have a bindu which is vigyanamaya to manomaya also happening there and the reason is this is the area the region that is physically correlated with your hypothalamus pituitary axis and your hypothalamus pituitary where the pituitary lies in its cave pituitary fossa pituitary lies in a depression because it's so important it's given a safety it's kept in a safety bunker like those safety bunkers where people uh go and hide when there are dangers and we all know what those safety bunkers are and who hides there the pituitary is hidden in a safety bunker it's its fossa pituitary fossa so the pituitary fossa which becomes a cave and so the nerves there become the cavernous plexus that's where that cavernous plexus comes which is related to the agnya the hypothalamus pituitary axis the hypothalamus is just above the pituitary and below the thalamus and this is the center of our existence because the hypothalamus pituitary axis enables so many functions to occur in our body the hypothalamus i've often said for me is the hridaya is the heart of our existence because everything seems to be connected to the hypothalamus especially anything that comes below the head all this stuff happening down seems to be governed by the hypothalamus the big boss this is the agnya so you have the bhu madhya you have the agnya then we go to the back of the head the occipital cortical area and in that if you go there comes to a place which is correlated with our brain stem this is the survival instinct area and this is the point of consciousness that enables the autonomic function which is breathing to occur so it is the respiratory process happening here the brain stem the medulla the pons and the midbrain constitute the brain stem which is just above the spinal cord and this is the region that sort of keeps the autonomic activities for example breathing the heart the circulation and digestion three things that you need for survival are taken care by this area breathing circulation digestion it doesn't care whether you are in your in a bed for the rest of your life it just keeps you alive this is called the aprakasha bindu and we have talked about this aprakasha bindu with reference to the aprakasha mudra where you after breathing in you swallow that swallowing action is the aprakasha mudra that activates this bindu and enables you to sort of have a safety valve when you're holding in the breath it's like a jalandhara bandha at a more subtle level the aprakasha mudra that activates the aprakasha bindu so the three bindus at this line which i will be focusing on today bhu madhya internally agnya and at the back you have the aprakasha so the three basically more or less in a similar line and there is a question if someone chooses to focus on bhu madhya bindu right from the beginning see people can do what they want 
I have no issue with people doing what they want. But when we are talking about the system of the Bindu, it is important to actually work with each one. Now the Bhumadhyaya Bindu is often used as a focal point of consciousness and in general is fine as a takeoff point. So, you know, you have people, you say, you know, sit erect with your spine well aligned and your head and neck and shoulders relaxed. And as you breathe in and you breathe out, let your mind start to focus at the midpoint between the eyebrows and the person starts to focus there and that energizes it. Nothing wrong in this. Nothing wrong. It is, it is, it is, it is part of a generalized practice. But if you are doing a Bindu Sadhana and you want to work on all these focal points of consciousness, all these apertures that connect us at the, at the manifest level to the unmanifest, Connecting the sthula with the karana through the uh, sukshma. So you can say that the bindu is like the sukshma. That is, that, is, that is a type of energy. Then it is a different thing. But if you are just choosing it as a contemplative point, the nasagra bindu and the brumadya bindu are very, very useful points of uh, focus. Because again, the mind focuses, the energy goes here. And if the energy goes here, the whole prefrontal cortex, which is what makes us human, that is getting activated, that is getting enhanced. So definitely it's very useful. So today I will stop with this and we'll continue our exploration. We have looked at the externalized bindus, Bahya Bindu, which include the Nabi, sorry, the Mula, Nabi, Kanta, Nasagra, Bhumadhyaya, and the Trikuti. These as the external points of focus and all along the central axis. That central axis, which is basically the Sushumna Nadi. So all of this is along the central axis. We have peripheral drishti points. You can, you can, you can have a drishti point at the, you know, the toes. You can have at the thumb. That is a different point, and different drishtis are brought in. Hmm? Angushta drishti, as they say, and all. But the, those are not bindus. That is more just a drishti point where you choose to focus. But a bindu is a focal point of consciousness coming in, giving you that opportunity to connect to something more subtle and causal. When we talk about the internalized bindus, the antara bindus, of which the sapta bindu, the seven bindus are given more importance, though there are many. The sapta bindu is a concept that is often brought out because seven is the number which is very much a spiritual introspective number. It is a swadhyaya number. And so we have the Bhumadhyaya, we have the Ajna, and we have the Aprakasha. And we will continue on this sadhana as we go on and giving you some ideas on what you can do. The ex external Bindus normally by sitting erect and in a deep contemplation, you could spend some time on each one contemplating it. And definitely when you do the Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha and Jalanda Bandha, you are working with them. The Nasagra and the uh, Bhumadhyaya are usually when you are doing contemplative practices or even as a Trataka. And, uh, the Nasagra Bindu can be used as a Trataka point and Bhumadhyaya also which then becomes another mudra called Shambhavi Mudra. And so you have Nasagra Drishti uh, Trataka, Bhumadhyaya Drishti uh, Trataka. So these become uh, practices where the Trataka can come into it. And then, of course, the Trikuti is a very, very important part that we need to contemplate because that is the pathway through which we need to leave the body on that final path. Thank you for being with me on this 75th day of this non-stop Nairantarya. Eh? Patanjali says, Abhyasa should be Satu Dhirga Kala. <laughs> Dhirga Kala Nairantarya. Eh? So, 75 days uninterrupted. Dhirgakala Nairantarya Satkara for a higher purpose. That's why we are doing it and not for anything else. Dhirgakala Nairantarya Satkara Ase Vito Dhrida Bhumi on a firm foundation. Well, the teachings of the Guru Parampara are our firm foundation. And on that we base all of this sadhana. Thank you for being with me once again. May you all be blessed. May we all be blessed to be the best humans that we can be and enable humanity. Let us make humanity 2020 the best version of itself till date.
हरिओम तत्सत